So this is the P2 section of the January 2013 paper. So the first question is related to generating electricity. And a lot of students, when they wrote the answer to this question, um, give fantastic answers about how a power station works. So they s describe the fact that the fuel is burnt uh, and that boils water which produces steam and the steam turns the turbine and the turbine turns the generator and the generator then goes to transformers and then to the national grid. That isn't what the question is asking though. The question is asking how a generator produces electricity. How a generator works in really simple terms. And a generator is actually a really simple uh, device. It basically consists of uh, a coil of wire um, a massive coil of wire with lots and lots of turns um, of wire wrapped around each other and in order to generate an electric current what we do is we put it inside a magnetic field so we have a north uh, end of a magnetic field and a south end so the magnetic field passes through the coil and what we do is we make the coil turn Okay, we make the coil rotate so the two things you need for two marks for this is you have a coil of wire which you rotate and you turn it in a magnetic field and by turning the wire in the magnetic field that is what generates a current and produces electricity in real power stations what you actually tend to get is uh, the magnet being rotated inside a fixed coil of wire uh, it does not matter which way around you actually describe it so the next question then is about efficiency so you need to look really carefully when you get an efficiency question um, to see about which bit of energy goes in and which bit of energy comes out. So it says for every 1.0 1 1, uh, 1 times 10 to the 6 joules of energy supplied, so if it's supplied, that means that's the energy going in, um, o uh, in coal, only 2.8 times 10 to the 5 joules are changed into electrical energy. So this is the energy that comes out. When you're doing efficiency, you do the energy out divided by the total energy in times 100. So you should have done 2.8 uh, times 10 to the 5 divided by 1 times 10 to the 6 times 100. And you should have got a percentage of uh, 28 uh, percent. The next question is about how you can increase the efficiency. Well, the reason something isn't efficient is because energy is wasted. And it says in the question up here that the, the power station can use the steam from the cooling towers to heat local homes. So this increases the efficiency. How? Well, very simply, it's the idea that you're using what would have been wasted energy. You're using that wasted energy to heat the homes, otherwise it would have just gone to waste. And so the efficiency increases you're putting more of the energy to a good use. Okay, this question is about photocells. Uh, Hannah says that she finds that uh, a panel of 30 centimeters times 20 centimeters produces 20 watts of power. She needs to produce 50. Calculate the area that she must use. So what you have to do is you have to look at uh, the area that Hannah actually has, uh, 30 times 20. Um, and look at the power she's got and the power she needs. So she's got 20. She needs to get that to 50. So to do that, in terms of multiplication, and that is times 2.5. So if I look at the area um, of the photocell here, and I work that out, I should get 600. And I times that by 2.5 and I'll get an answer of 1,500 centimetres squared. The next question, this is an example of a question that no student has an excuse for not attempting because this is our favourite type of question, this is a table question, which means you don't actually need to particularly know anything, you just need to be able to read the table and use the information. So it says Hannah makes a conclusion from her results, when I double the distance the current is quarter of the original value. Is this a sensible con conclusion for all of the results? Now the exam board have put all in bold for you. That means they are trying to stress something to you, so you should underline that. And use the data to explain your answer. So 
Is her conclusion correct? Well, you don't get any marks for that. But the answer is no. And the reason for that is because if you look here, you have to quote numbers in your answer. So to get your first mark, uh, you need to make sure that you're using at least one piece of data to support conclusions. So if you look at 5 and 10, to go from 5 to 10, that's doubled. And this has decreased by a quarter. Okay, 30 is a quarter of uh, 120. So it works for that bit. If I, what a lot of students end in is they then look from 10 to 15. Well, that's not half, so I need to really look from 10 to 20. Uh, and if I double it, I can see from here, going from 30 to 7.5, well, that is a quarter. Now, if I look at the other values uh, around uh, around here now, um, I see that this pattern breaks down. Uh, and so any values after this uh, point, it doesn't work the same. So the conclusion that, um, that you can make is that up to 15 centimetres is correct. Uh, and then beyond 15 centimetres, when you start to do it from that point, uh, it no longer works. So, for example, if you look at 15 to 30, that's, again, a quarter. But beyond that, uh, it doesn't work. And so 2.2 is not a quarter of 7.5. So it fails, stops working at that stage. And you just need to use numbers in your answer to describe that. This is a six mark question. Now, a lot of students really struggle with this question. Where, which is actually incredibly straightforward uh, and I think the thing that threw most students is the idea it's about waste and about how to dispose of it and you have to use the no ordinary things you would talk about when, with radiation um, which you should know you obviously have to comment on the penetration uh, of each type of radiation the penetrating power um, and also how ionizing they are is always a good thing to comment on uh, and reasons why so, <coughs> the f first thing is you've got to suggest how each type, which means you have to talk about all three types of waste, can be disposed, giving reasons. So to get six marks for this question, you have to state a method of disposal for each of the types and give a reason for each one. So if we look at the uranium, <coughs> we could um, uranium is very radioactive. Sources that are very radioactive, um, we ha have to bury underground. So we would bury this underground, we'd encase it in glass, uh, and usually uh, surround it by concrete as well. Um, now, you may think that is overkill. The reason we would do that is because it's very radioactive. Uh, it may generate some heat, so we may need to keep this uh, stored um, radiation cool as well. Um, it has a very, very long half-life, which is another reason it has to be buried, because we need to keep it safe and away uh, and out of reach for a long period of time. Despite this, it only emits alpha radiation, so it's not actually very penetrating. <coughs> um, we probably wouldn't need to, for, for this particular source of uranium, probably wouldn't need to line it with concrete. Just burying it would probably be fine. We just need to store it and contain it. Um, if you compare that to the iodine, the iodine is still very radioactive, so we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to bury it, but now we definitely would need concrete because uh, it emits beta and gamma radiation. So because it's got a much greater penetrating power, we need to be more specific about how we're burying it. Uh, it has a short half-life, so it could be stored uh, on the surface for a short period of time, um, but that's probably not the best way to, to deal with it. And then lastly, the mix of hospital sources, because it's only slightly radioactive uh, and it has a very long uh, half-life. So the fact that it's got a long half-life for me is we need to at least be aware of it. But because it's not very radioactive, you can dispose of it like most other no ordinary waste. So you, as long you just need to place it on a landfill. Um, <coughs> the gamma radiation that's emitted, though, could be a problem, as that's highly penetrating. Uh, but because it's... Um, got a relatively short half-life in comparison to the uranium source then as long as we we can store it until such a point where the activity is decreased significantly so this is about uses uh, of radioactive sources alpha is used in smoke detectors the use of beta radiation is in paper thickness 
The reason we use beta is because it will penetrate the paper, but if the paper becomes too thick, the amount of beta penetrating it will decrease, and so uh, then the computer can then detect this and then squeeze the rollers closer together to make the paper of the correct thickness. And uses of gamma radiation, when you see gamma radiation, I want you to think um, the T's. So there's two T's that you associate with gamma. One is treatment, so it's treatment of cancer. Um, please don't just put to kill cancer. Right? It won't kill cancer. Uh, if it was that easy, then it would be wonderful, but it can be used to treat cancer. Um, it's also used as radioactive tracers. Don't just put to detect cancer. Um, that's not specific enough. Right? Um, you can also use it to kill microbes or bacteria on food or sterilize surgical equipment. Okay, comets orbit the sun. The speed of a comet increases as it's closer to the sun. Explain why. The reason for this is really straightforward. The closer to the sun you are, the stronger the force due to gravity. So the closer you are, the greater the gravitational force the comet experiences. That means that it will accelerate as it comes to close to the sun. Uh, and this follows uh, the equation F equals MA. So as the force increases, um, because it's getting closer to the sun, the force of gravity increases, then it accelerates. <coughs> this question is about monitoring uh, uh, near-Earth objects. What actions can be taken to reduce the threat? So the first mark is we can monitor it. You don't have to, you don't need to be a little bit more specific than that. But the first thing we need to do is identify uh, uh, near-Earth objects um, and then monitor their trajectory to make sure that they're not on a collision course with Earth. Um, so we track them and we use satellites or telescopes to do that. The other thing that we could do in order to reduce the threat is if we did have a, a suspicion that an NEO was going to collide with us, then we would have to deflect it, uh, not destroy it, we'd have to deflect it uh, using explosives to try and change the path um, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the com of the comet or, or near-Earth object, sorry. <coughs> and the last question is about the Big Bang. Uh, the Big Bang accounts for the start of the universe. Light observed from distant galaxies is shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. This is called redshift. How do these observations support the Big Bang Theory? Redshift provides evidence for the Big Bang because when we look at the light from galaxies, uh, an object is redshifted. Uh, if we imagine these are galaxies, and this is the Earth, um, as the galaxies are moving away from us, it's that process of the galaxies uh, moving away uh, from the Earth that then it makes it appear as if they're redshifted or their spectrum is shifted towards the red end because they're moving away. So that's the that's the simple one mark point for this. It, it provides evidence that galaxies are moving away from the Earth. And if that must be true, then they must have started, if you track this back, they must have all started a common point, which is why we get the idea of the Big Bang. And this uh, last question is about, uh, again, about redshift. And it says, the graph shows galaxy B is further away from the Earth than galaxy A. What two conclusions can be made about galaxy A and galaxy B? So you can see, very if you just by reading off the graph, you've got always look at the axes first. So you've got redshift and you've got distance of the galaxy from the Earth. So Galaxy B is is has greater redshift than Galaxy A because in redshift increases that way. So Galaxy B is more redshifted. Why? Well, we know it's further away from the Earth because they've told us that in the question. So please don't repeat that. Um, you can as part of your answer, but it is effectively just waffle if you do that. You have to explain well, what, why is it that way. And the reason is because if a galaxy is more redshifted, if it's further away, then it's, it's travelled further. And in order to travel a greater distance in the same period of time, it must be travelling faster. So galaxies that are further away from the Earth are travelling faster than ones that are closer. Uh, this is the last question in um, P2 um, of this uh, exam paper. Make sure that you watch the section on question uh, on section D.